welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wasbir Hussain. Now, those convicted of raping girls below 12 years of age can be handed down death penalty by courts. And for those found guilty of raping a girl under 16, the minimum punishment has been increased from 10 to 20 years, extendable to imprisonment for rest of his life. And the minimum punishment in case of rape of women has been increased from rigorous imprisonment of seven years to 10 years, extendable to life imprisonment. All these tough provisions have come by way of an ordinance called the Criminal Law Amendment Ordinance 2018, which received a president's assent on Sunday. The ordinance obviously has come in view of the malaise of rape spreading across the country and the utter sense of helplessness being felt by the people on women's safety. The horrific incidents of rape in Unnao and Katua and the nationwide outrage only appears to have hastened this extreme step by the union government. In Assam too, crime against women is increasing alarmingly with a rape incident being reported almost every single day in the past one month. Several questions arise. First, what has forced the government to take recourse to such stringent provisions? Secondly, why should the death penalty be made applicable to convicts raping only girls below 12? Why should the quantum of punishment vary with the victim's age? How frequently or effectively can the government actually implement such tough laws? What about conviction of the accused, which is very low at present to say the least? We shall try to find answers to these critical questions. Before we discuss the subject, let us take a look at this special report. President Ramnath Govind has signed the executive order allowing courts to pronounce a death penalty to those convicted of raping children up to 12 years of age. The significant development comes only a day after the union cabinet cleared the ordinance to amend the POXO Act. In addition to the death penalty, the ordinance also prescribes the minimum punishment in case of rape of women to increase from rigorous imprisonment of seven years to ten years, which is extendable to life imprisonment. In case of rape of a girl under 16 years, minimum punishment has been increased from ten years to twenty years, which again is extendable to imprisonment for life. Also, for speedy trial of rape cases, new fast-track courts will be set up in consultation with states and union, territories and high courts. Besides, the investigation of all rape cases has to be mandatorily completed within two months. The same time limit applies to the trial of all rape cases. And appeals have to be disposed of in six months. So clearly some significant steps in the ordinance passed by the union cabinet and given a go-ahead by the president. Well, the entire nation is celebrating this massive step forward in its fight against the crime who now rape victim and mother of the 2012 Delhi rape victim Nirbhaya have also lauded the center's move. However, both questioned the age barrier in the amendment and wondered why all rapists are still not being treated as same. Jobhi cabinet se pass hua hai, main bahut thanks karna chaati hoon ki kam se kam ek chiz samne aayi hai. Lekin main is is se santusht nahi hoon kyunki bachiyon ke liye to thik hai. Lekin jo बारह साल से ऊपर के हैं उनके लिए क्या तो मेरा मानना है कि सब रेपिस्टों को फांसी होनी चाहिए बारह तक नहीं सोलह साल तक लड़कियों के साथ जो गलत हो रहा है हो सके तो उसको जीवन के लिए कारावास कारावास हो और हो सके तो उनको फांसी की सजा दी जाए मीनवाइल राइट्स एक्टिविस्ट्स फ्रॉम द रीजन आल्सो एकोड सिमिलर व्य तो आपका 12 इयर्स हो 8 इयर्स अभी तो चार महीने का बच्ची को भी रेप किया इंदौर में एंड 70 80 इयर्स का ग्रैंड मदर्स को रेप कर रहे हैं ये जो डेथ पेनल्टी वाला मसला है और वो लॉजिक हमारे समझ के परे है तो हम लोगों को लगता है कि इट्स बेसिकली ट्राइंग टू यू नो अपीज द लार्जेस्ट साइकी 
कि उनका जो गुस्सा है उसको एसवेज करने के लिए चलो डेथ पेनल्टी हो गया और अभी तक जो जुडिशियल रिकॉर्ड्स के मुताबिक सो फार ओनली थ्री परसेंट ऑफ एक्यूज आर कन्विक्टेड तो कन्विक्शन रेट इतना पुअर है वेलकम द डिसीजन ऑफ द कैबिनेट इट इज़ ए गुड डिसीजन दैट कैपिटल पनिशमेंट फॉर ए रेपिस्ट अंडर द एज ऑफ बट आई हैव ऑब्जेक्शन टू द टर्म अंडर एज ऑफ ट्वेल्व बिकॉज रेप इज ए रेप rapist is a rapist so uh, if he rapes a girl child under the age of 12 or whether he rapes a woman at the age of 60 doesn't matter so the capital punishment should be awarded to all the rapist bureau report not this live all right i am now joined from gohati by senior advocate arup barbara well known social activist hasina karbi joins me from shillong in kohima I have Meji Volu Terrier the member secretary of the Nagaland Legal Services Authority and of course at our studios I have Dr Rakhi Kalita Moral of Cotton University well known writer and commentator Maini Mohanta and leading child rights activist Miguel Kia uh, I'd like to go straight to Mr Arup Barbara Mr Barbara we have all come to know about the ordinance a uh, date sentence to rapist below the age of 12 if the victim is below 12 years death penalty there has been a lot of questions on this as a lawyer as a legal personality what are your first thoughts i think the ordinance has been passed in some hot so hot haste stringent punishment for rape or for any crime against women may always be a deterrent but by itself it may not mitigate or right. may not eradicate may, may not eradicate crime against women was be for example we know about the criminal amendment act of 2013 which is popularly known as nirbhaya act yeah and some stringent punishments were provided and some segregation of juveniles were done <coughs> and that act came into effect from 2nd of april 2013 but now take the statistics of the delhi police itself after the coming into force of the nirbhaya act rapes in the delhi Del- Delhi metropolitan area has increased by 277 percent. So it's all a question of enforcement, And Mr. Arup Barbara, isn't it? Again. Enforcing the law, not having the law just like that. That that that's what I am coming to. You have asked me about the categorization. You have uh, so that has enhanced categorization. I don't think it should be correlated to the age of the victim. Absolutely. That below 12 years, below 12 years, it is date. even if the victim is 12 year and 1 month it is life and not death it is ironic about it this sort of correlation of the quantum of punishment with the age of victim i believe is debatable and it may be irrational absolutely i'll 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 come back rape, to you after all rape no no just let me finish rape after all is a heinous crime whether it is against a 12 year old girl or a 45 year old woman it's heinous it is condemnable yeah. and it is unpardonable absolutely i agree no dispute on that hasina karbi uh, there are a lot of people saying lot of things about how rape is a rape there should cannot be determined by the age the quantum of punishment cannot be determined by the age of the victim what are your thoughts how do you look at it Well I do agree that the age of you know the quantum of age should not be a deterrent when it comes to punishment it should be the same but if you're looking in from the global human rights issues death penalty in many many ways has been abolished in many many countries so we also need to uh, to also ha- and it's still a debatable issue yeah if you are talking about rape i think it's a heinous i agree with that punishment has to be the same for everybody whether there's a woman or a child but when it come to death penalty it's still a debatable issue across the globe 
because there's a lot of human rights organization working for but stopping Hasina, death penalty. But Hasina, don't so that's it, also it has become that we need to, uh, Hasina, I think it's still it has become debate. almost it has become almost fashionable to oppose death sentence, Hasina Karbi. There is a brigade opposing death sentence. We have Miguel Kuya, who is uh, from yes. a, a part of that. You know, I'm not saying he's part of the brigade, but he has his well-argued statement, which he is going to place before us. But he is among those who opposes death punishment. My question to you, Asina, uh, uh, it's become fashionable to oppose death sentence. It is to a many, many section of the society is becoming more fashionable, but uh, I'm talking about, I think, life imprisonment is something that I stand for it. Right. Because working with a lot of global human rights organization where we are talking about death penalty, it's something that you cannot take a human life, is something that has been abolished. So but, we also need to understand but, uh, that aspect That is well. a debatable point. I'll come back to you, Hasina. Let me go to, before I come to my panelist in the studio, let me go to Mezi Volu Terrier. Mezi Volu is uh, member secretary of the Nagaland Legal Services Authority. Uh, Mezi Volu, welcome to Northeast Life. Uh, my question is, there are two issues. One, how are Thank you sir. looking at this latest ordinance, death penalty for rapists, uh, uh, raping children below? 12 years, leaping girls below 12 years, and what are your thoughts about the death penalty itself? Uh, to me, personally, I feel that one cannot give life, so therefore, one cannot take life. And therefore, to me, uh, if the person, the offender, is put behind bars for the rest of his or her life, then that itself, is the worst of punishment that can be given to the offender. Right. Uh, I will come back to you. These are the opening remarks. Now, my name is uh, Basically, you know, a lot of people are saying that if you cannot give life, you cannot take life. My question to you, when a rapist rapes in a helpless woman, minors, uh, irrespective of whatever their age is, now question is, at times they have even killed most of the victims have been subjected to marginalist torture, leading to their death as well. What yeah. do you say? How do you deal with this issue? Yeah, Wazbir, you see, uh, crime rises in a society where the criminal can think that he can easily be escaped. There is no one to catch him. They are, there is no one to punish him. So we feel uh, uh, the requirement of a strong law. But you, uh, you can say that I am sitting at a sitting on a fence right now because I am also in confusion because uh, the as Arubda said why uh, under 12 what about 13 14 15 yeah so uh, the rapist must be punished in the same uh, not the age wise right so uh, I uh, welcome the law but I have some confusion because enforcement of the law you see in India last three decades only two guys were hanged for rapping and murdering the two guys were one is Otto Shankar from South India and another is Dhananjoy from West Bengal. Both of them are from a very poor background. They have no money to spend for, uh, for, for fighting uh, their case. case. Yeah. So uh, do you think that last three decades no rich person did any the, such type of heinous crime? Absolutely. Uh, that is a very good point. So far, uh, only two people in the last two decades, that was my name Honto, is saying, I have different figures. I will go to Aurobo around that. Uh, Miguel, I'll come to you, Rakhi, to give a wrap up of, of first opening remarks. Miguel, what are your thoughts? What do you think about the law? And first of all, you, you cannot also deny the circumstances that has forced the government of India to come, out, to come up with this law. No, see, uh, one thing was be, uh, you should understand is that there is a difference between revenge and justice. Okay, So just by uh, acting on a public opinion, this is the same public opinion that stopped a government in JNK to actually lodge a case against the rapist in the Katwa murder case. So what happens is the government actually, after taking in public opinion, deliberates upon it, consults, and then comes up with a law. There is a process. Now, the government here did not... Uh, uh, decide to undergo any legal process but just to come take this top-down approach and come up with a law which has first of all uh, it has no validity secondly it is it is it is rejected by every women's right organization rape survivors network and most of the child rights organizations all around the not only the country but the world even the United Nations 
has taken a very strong stand against the uh, fut against the futility about the futility of death penalty. So this is my opening remarks on this issue. Right, right, uh, Rocky, Rocky. I mean, what are your thoughts? After all, we have to see the situation in which rate the rape or crime against women is increasing in this country the conviction rate is low despite all kinds of laws and provisions being enforced this kind of malaise is increasing by the day perhaps the government has found it necessary to toughen the law further to act as a deterrent we know there will be people opposed to death penalty but don't you think that to for women's safety this kind of a law is important especially as a strong deterrent uh, Vasbir, <clears throat> you've just said it, uh, but while we have argued in the last five minutes or so for and against the idea of uh, capital punishment and the death penalty that has been warranted by the ordinance, uh, it's, it's quite clear that we are in the horns of a dilemma. Uh, there is a moral issue to it. There is obviously a very important uh, constitutional argument that if you don't have, if you cannot give life, then you cannot take life. But I would also like to add, and this is where I'm coming from, that we have seen, we have uh, had very cool and you know very solid intellectual debates over a long period of time now, in which we have seen the rate of crime, sexual crime and rapes only rise. So the question that has come to us, both in terms yeah. of governance and in terms of how the government intervenes, in terms of how civil society behaves and how people like us who are looking at it as also a moral, theoretical, political idea. Uh, you see, the question that confronts is, uh, us now is, should we step across the line? Should we put a very strong signal saying, can we've done this straight, enough? Can you just talk straight? What are your views? Are you opposed to this? Are you supporting this? What, what is it? I, I, I am just coming to this and I say that the emotional moment has taken over the cool intellectual debate. You know, we so are... You, are we you are saying that this government of India has passed this uh, death penalty uh, ordinance just because of emotional pressure? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to say is that sure there is pressure. It is a, it is a kind of uh, a, a, a moment, a decision that has come with a long sort of, you know, period of... So I, I'm getting the sense that there are opinion, there are activists and individuals who will blame the government for not being able to control the situation. When the government comes up with tough approach, they will not be able to support it openly. So this is the dilemma this country faces. I mean, I'm getting that kind of a sense from you, Rakhi Kalita. No. Uh, Wasbir, I also speak very strongly from my gender. No, what Today, is the, are you are you opposed to this death penalty? Like Miguel has absolutely no doubts. He has cleared clearly said that he's opposed to death penalty. What are your what is your view? My view comes from this ground that if we have seen an intellectual debate over death penalty not make any resolutions, I think it is time for us to put the flag and said, come on, we need some stringent measures, right. and we need to have a deterrent argument. Absolutely. If only, if only okay. but mind you i do have a parenthesis yeah, here what is that and and the parenthesis is that we no have to watch no person should be we exactly yeah no the, innocent there person are, should be falsely implicated and put to the gallows and there are far too many caveats was be for yeah. us to just take a right. black and white uh, let me let me let this. me go to mr oru barbara mr oru barbara from 1947 to now only 755 people have been executed in this country i'm not talking about rape overall the total number of people executed in this country since independence is 755. These are some of the estimates that have emerged uh, in the last few days, actually. Uh, these are actually figures from the National Law University. Uh, Mr. Barbara, you know, it's a question of law enforcement, yes, isn't it? They have been declined. No. There was be one thing. About the propriety or otherwise of imposition of death penalty, globally there are two views. Those who support death penalty yeah. are called retentionists and those who oppose death penalty are called abolitionists. I am an ardent abolitionist. But one thing is clear, whether abolitionism or retentionist, it will require a big debate and put it for some other day. Now at present suffice it to say that by opposing death penalty, it must not be meant that one is supporting the heinous crime like rape or murder yes. or multiple murder. Absolutely. By opposing death penalty, it should not be taken that I am supporting any heinous crime. Moreover, there is another angle attached to it. Say, normally in our country, in India, till now globally 
More than 100 countries have abolished death penalty and another 30 countries. They have put the provision of death penalty in a moratorium. Therefore, the question is not whether it is a deterrent or whether it is there should be some reformative punishment prescribed. Yeah. Normally, in India, when you say it is life imprisonment, a man normally gets the guilty, normally gets a remission after 12 or 14 years of imprisonment. True. But in latest, in of late, the Supreme Court, in a recently Mohandra Bara's case, which I did before this High Court, Supreme Court said, no, we are waiving the death penalty part of the punishment, but he will be life imprisoned till he breaches his last in jail. So the debt, as opposed to debt, life should be life imprisonment right. of the guilty person, of the condemned person, of the prisoner till he breaches last in his jail. Yes. There is another angle to it, was built. There is also so the execution, death sentence, it takes only a few seconds. Okay, it takes only a few seconds. But the convict, be he a rapist, be he a terrorist, or be he a, any heinous crime monger, if he is put right. in prison, rigorous imprisonment till he breaches his last, he, every day he repents, every day he be remorseful. So every these day are he arguments, regrets. yes, that is the, that is the, that is the that thing. That is what? But, Life but, but he, re he repents. Uh, Mr. Arun Baba, I'll, I'll take this question to contrary to Mejivolu and Hasina Kharbe before coming to my panelists here. Uh, Mejivolu, you see, Mr. Arun Barbara, a very, very well-known lawyer, he is arguing that if a person is sentenced to life, he repents every day. But my question to you, does it, is it deterrent enough? Because he is leaving, he may be repenting, but other people are continuing with this malaise. They're going about raping spree. Uh, unless, you know, some people are executed, put no, to the, the gallows, is, like, even like, if like you know, <coughs> yes, carry on. Even if that sentence is given, that uh, is not acting as a deterrent. How do you know that? Uh, so therefore, if the person is, no, because once the person is, just like the previous speaker who has said, that once the person is uh, put to death, then he is dead. But then a person who is put behind the bars and if he is under imprisonment for life, for the rest of his life, then every day he will be remorseful. Wow, I am not buying, I am Mezi Volo, Mezi Volo, I am not really convinced with this argument. Let me take yes. this to Asina Karbi. He is repenting, but it is only him who is repenting. But if the, someone is put to the gallows, like a rape which is go, which goes viral whenever any any unfortunate incident of rape happens it goes viral similarly if one or two people are executed with full proof uh, after full proof after they are convicted by the due process of law if they are put to the gallows if that kind of a news spread perhaps the fear fear of death is much more than the fear of living even within confinement hasina Well, I think, Vasbi, what is so important is the implementation of the law that needs to be looked into it. I think when uh, Miguel was saying about this has not been a process and the way this law, I mean, in the way the ordinance has been passed, I totally agree with that because having worked in this sector for a very long time and also going down to court to appear for many victims over the years, these cases get basically lingering in the court for many, many years because there's not much more stringent kind of uh, evidences that comes about it. And evidence becomes a very, very important element when we have to... No, no, that is true. We are not doubting that. Law. Evidence is Our important. Our experiences, I'm my personal experiences evidence. is that... That is obvious, Hasina. Without evidence, we are not talking about just... Uh, uh, we, are not, we are not asking for punishment by kangaroo courts. We are talking about punishment by the due process of law. Evidence is a must. Miguel, let us not be emotional. Let us look at the gravity of the situation. A crime, a, a rape every day in Assam in the last 30 days, spreading from minors to married women to children to girls. I mean, what is going on? I mean, don't you buy this argument that deterrent has to be, there has to be a strong enough deterrent to scare the guts out of potential rapists. No, see, first of all, Wasbir, I completely disagree about this word fear, fear all the time. You know, fear is a mechanism of governance. It's only used in governments that are authoritarian, that, are, that have dictatorship, not in a democracy, one. 
Secondly, when you're talking about uh, what is happening, the context, the context, see, the problem of rape is actually within. It's not something out there, you hang oh, someone that and be, it's sorted. That will be, that will but, be, your, that will be moral science school. Not, of course school not. moral science of lesson. Of not. You, we should not rape, what we should about, respect no, towards women. But what about, respect towards no, 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 women. No, no, These no, are moral science absolutely lessons, Miguel. Not. These the are pure and simple moral science lessons. Uh, Mani Mondo, how there. do you look at it? Yeah. I look at Miguel's argument as pure moral science lessons. That would have been a utopian world, there would be no problem. But tell me, where has it worked? No, 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 no that's no, a different that's issue. Not, first of all. That's a different we issue. We have the to. Law. We welcome the law. But thing is that lack of law is not the only factor for raising crimes against women in India. There are other factors and these factors are very important. You see, True. after Nirbhaya incidents, everybody knows that a commission was formed, Justice Varma Commission. Justice Varma has given some good suggestions. How many of these suggestions are implemented up till now? Poor implementation. A Nirbhaya fund was introduced. How much of money is properly util utilized up till now? So this is this government should take care of these things. Another thing is the role of police. In India, this is not my yes, opinion. That Ritter, is a Jassi, very important, Ruma, Pal, C. That Shay, is a that very important police point. Police behave sometimes like that victim, as if victim is the criminal. Exactly. So, uh, uh, Mr. Arup Barbara, what, are, what is your experience? Very important point raised by Maini Mohanto, the role of the police. The, the, okay, Arup Barbara's phone is disconnected. We'll go back to Maini. Uh, 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 let, me, let me take this question to Rakhi. Very important point, the police, police, actually treats sometimes a victim uh, like an accused. That is what is there. That's very common. They, they refuse to even lose affairs. Uh, you're right, Waspir. Uh, the way the police have governed or misgoverned, uh, you know, in in so many areas, uh, that uh, has been a deterrent, a major deterrent in even tapping and even tracking down such no, cases. No, hurdle. The other Measure hurdle, not deterrent. Measure yeah, hurdle. The, the other problem, the other problem that I would like to sort of highlight here is have we taken a real practical look at how much of our given you know yeah. areas municipal areas are covered by police outposts and police stations yes. which can actually practically scrutinize and have surveillance over such elements over such well uh, 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 i don't know elements. whether the police can be uh, can have surveillance all the time let me take this question to Arup barbara uh, mr Arup barbara uh, maini mohanta has raised a very important point the role of the police we are talking about how, uh, how, how can we control this kind of a situation? What is that medicine that can act as a real deterrent? But uh, Maini Monta said that police sometimes treat the victims as if they are dead, uh, accused themselves. You see, there will have to be a well network of prosecution everywhere. What we are lacking is a basic investigation network, the laboratory facilities, the forensic facilities, all in all these cases, especially places like Assam is lagging behind. That will have to be updated, that will have to be modernized. Just merely talking about finishing a rape case trial is two months is not, will not go, will not going to work. It's not going to work. There will have to be the amenities, there will have to be the laboratory testing facilities, forensic facilities, all these uh, chemical examination facilities. Only when it is watertight, then the rate of success for the prosecution is Prosecution, prosecution of course. About Finishing a trial in two months, yeah. I don't think it will materialize. Prosecution holds the key. I'll go for a short break. Don't go away. When I come back, I'll come to Miguel Cuya to take his response to some of the points which I have raised and also some of the points which the other people have raised. Of course, I'll go to my panelists, Meji Voluin, Kohima, Hasina Karbi in Shillong, and of course, our panelists at the studio here. Don't go away. Welcome back. Hasina Karbi, I mean, as I've said right in the beginning, uh, let us not go by the fashion of opposing death penalty. My question is, let us be practical. The, how can we control the malaise? How can we control it? But don't you think a strong enough deterrent is really necessary? Do you think, uh, don't you think that? I mean, uh, because, you know, every day there's a rape in the case of Assam. There has been 16 to 17 rapes in Meghalaya in the last couple of days. There has to be stringent punishment, Vasbir. I totally agree. I totally agree with the fact that prosecution has to be much more higher. That will send a stronger message how to long, the public. How long can but we wait for the prosecution? Is not Hasina, how, how bring long down can we wait for the prosecution? So, the question is, did 
Why long? How long can we go into the prosecution? Well, I think we need to have special court. We we need uh, was we, we think, need to I think, have I think, special I think, I think court. Yeah, how long do we wait for the prosecution? Put together by the judicial. True. Now, there's a lot of special court that is there to sp fasten. I mean, to speed up the case uh, inquiry and as well as case deliveries. So we need to have that in place because half the judicial people are not sensitive at all. So I think that is very very important. So unless until we put that in place, even if we have a law, the case doesn't get to prosecution level at all. But but, but but considering prosecution is a very important element. Considering here. Hasina, considering what you are saying, yes, we all know that conviction rate has to go up. For conviction to happen, it should be a watertight case. There has to be proper police investigation. Police have to be friendly. Victims have to be able to come and come up, file their cases easily. So this is all well known. My question to you with this I mean, this uh, this crime against women or rape in particular reaching alarming proportions. Don't you think uh, effective deterrent is necessary? If there is, if if the people have to, go, we are not talking about moral science lessons here. It's not about moral science here, Wasbir. It's about prosecution. When prosecution goes up, you're already sending a strong message that rapists can be you know, prosecuted and rape cases will be prosecuted faster if there's a special so, court. That itself said a very, so, very strong So let me, let, me go to, let me go to Mezi Volu. Uh, Mezi Volu, do you think the, the key, the catch lies in prosecution? Mezi Volu, I want Mezi Volu on the screen, please. Yes. Uh, Mezi Volu, do you think prosecution holds yes. the key? More convictions. Uh, the thing is, See, uh, the thing is, we need the whole of criminal uh, justice system in place, like not only the prosecution, but the court, the judges, the prosecution, the police, all working together so that the accused <coughs> is given befitting punishment. No, 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 no. What, what about I the society? Should look at are, we, are we, are we, can we rest, do nothing? and Hardly. leave everything to the government? What about the society, Mejivolu? Not at all. The society also plays a very pivotal role. Uh, the society plays a very important role. See, right now in India, the whole of India is burning. It's because of public opinion. So therefore, the society plays a very important role in bringing the accused to book. And not only that, the accused uh, the society should put pressure, uh, be it on the court or the police or the investigation, the prosecution, so, so that the person is given befitting punishment. Right. Miguel, do you think, do you think social activism, do you think that is on the region public pressure? Do you think government is acting only on public pressure and nothing else? Absolutely. Because, uh, because I think if the government really wanted to act, it would have first looked at uh, strengthening the laws which are already in place. You know, if you look at the conviction rates in Assam, it's 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 just I mean uh, I think out of 172 cases, only 42 received convictions. 130 cases ended in acquittal, and these were very serious offences. But the but the judiciary and the government and the law enforcement agencies did not care because when offender is mostly powerful, he gets away very easily. Bails are so easy in the system. You know, it is easy to catch a rickshaw puller and a thela wala and someone living in the slums and char areas, but catch a professor, catch a lawyer. You know, all of them are roaming around in bails. In a case in Karbiang Long, when government officials raped <coughs> minor girls in a government office and were rejected bail in the district and sessions court the officials came down to Guwahati and took a bail from the High Court. How is it possible? Now, through these, we are giving a sign that, you know, it is just okay to rape and get away with it because all the powerful people are getting away with it. But if, 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 if you have a death penalty, it is absolutely anti-poor because the only target will be these poor people who don't uh, have legal representation, yeah, legal services, is, authorities uh, are not working. Know, that, you is, know? That, is, that, is, that is a strong argument put forward by Miguel. My question to you, I, I mean, okay, there are, there are hardly, the conviction rate is poor, I agree. Uh, we all know that. But what about organizations specifically? Do you, like Miguel, your organization, for example, we have not seen, I'm not talking about your organization as such, but uh, organizations working for women's rights, working for child rights, why 
these are these organizations silent on the low rate of conviction why are they giving only media media statements we have not seen activism on the parts of these organizations talking about low prosecution are you talking about this only during a debate like this or no. occasional when the media comes to you to ask your comment when there is a rape no. why in the normal circumstances we don't see organizations actually coming out and filing a case against why asking a, uh, even a, even a, even an rti information as to the, the number of prosecution number of convictions i think there is no debate on that of course there is see because uh, first of all we need to understand that we have very less social organizations working on these issues in assam compared to no, other, other states about one assam. Uh, in assam even if you when we when we as activists go out uh, asking for peer, uh, support of people in cases of you no know, uh, rapists who roam around scot free low convictions but no they, they are not takers to it because this does not sell you know the, the, that is the response no, no, it we are talking it's not a question but if it's different, caught even, by the media even the statement taking procedure is different in assam in delhi police the procedure is like that the victim need not go to the police station the police personnel come to the victim's place with uh, civil dress so that victim cannot be terrified and they take statement in front of their family members but here in assam the victim need to go to the police station need to wait for a long time and police sometimes behave very badly and another thing is our society's mindset we couldn't come out from our patriarch mindset True. this is the major factor you see few years back in guwahati a guy killed his wife beheaded his wife and bleed with that bleeded head he went to the police station and surrendered and that guy was escaped because police didn't uh, make the case diary properly and some people they uh, they express their sympathy to that person no way out for I him i think that, i think this is a very strong very argument i think place, the yeah. police uh, has to answer uh, this may not be peculiar only to assam there may be other states where the police must be acting in a similar similar fashion uh, uh, no 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 i don't know whether mr arup barbara is back uh, he uh, okay we will go to arup barbara rakhi i mean the role of the police comes into questions to a great extent spotlight on the police Uh, the 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 police has been taken into scrutiny has been under scrutiny for a very long time and i'm taking up miguel's point precisely this kind of uh, you know appalling sort of you know inability to not actually render service by the police or to take a prosecution to its logical conclusion actually makes uh, necessary certain stringent measures in place so that what is not happening as an activist you have you have admitted there are already stringent measures in place rakhi as an as an as an activist uh, big well my point is that as an activist you have admitted that there are several attempts by you and you know organizations such as yours to come to the public to to bring mobilized public every time these things happen and even as we are speaking was be right now it's perhaps right now right here somewhere around us another very horrific incident oh, might yes, be taking of place course, so of how course. how long are we and to mobilize fact, people in fact on saturday when the government when the cabinet was meeting to discuss this ordinance before it was forwarded to the president for his assent a, a rape a horrific rape of exactly. a minor had taken place and in fact when the president's assent was uh, was received yesterday in karimganj a 45 year old woman was gang raped so this is the situation where we are living in hasina i mean uh, you know there are enough strong reasons why uh, uh, this kind of a stringent measure has come into place in the first place but uh, let me go to arup barbara arup barbara is back with us mr arup barbara role of the police role of the police comes in uh, to into focus isn't it role of the police is extremely important in this how friendly is the police in accepting a, a complaint from a victim the role is threefold one that of the law makers then the police then the prosecution and then the entire infrastructural setup pertaining to investigation and prosecution role is not particular of one one corner or one one field so it is the combination of everything that you can only expect a successful rate of prosecution really the guilty should be punished and it should be expeditious trial for which as i have said you need a machinery you need a well knit coordination of every wings of the prosecution police and law without which it yeah, will be mere is, saying it will be there is another another India. aspect mr arubarbara there is another aspect how friendly how friendly is the police in actually making the victim or the victim's family comfortable for enabling them to lodge the complaint in the first place actually the rate of rape have has increased one good thing has come out during the last 5 years earlier many cases were not reported 
because of the fear on part of the victims family members because of their backwardness because yeah. they felt they felt shy of uh, the social stigma which may be attached to the raped girl for many a factors it is it is all because of lack of social awareness but gradually now at least in the last 5 years after nirbhaya a time has come that more and more reporting has taken place but as i have said was be it is not the question of uh, giving a death penalty or imposing a life or imposing certain stringent punishment there are certain other things the cure lies elsewhere cure lies elsewhere it is the societal mindset towards women which have to be improved now, in india it is the societal psychological mindset no but 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 uh, mindset yes, against women that that we know but who is responsible yeah, who should change this mindset who is it the responsibility of the government to change the mindset definitely there are wings everybody will have to work there are civil society is working there are government working education is the prime thing education is related to crime sex no. education is also necessary massive awareness creation and social learnings are necessary there must be some there must be some regulation easy availability of pornography through internet is yes. there any regulation Absolutely. these no. are the laws was be i tell you one thing there request there just wait a minute there request to be some restrictions even on advertisements that are being shown in your television channels which shows clear nudity and sexual encouragement we family members cannot sit in front of a television screen and watch certain as a advertisement there will there will have to be equally regulation on these also there will have to be regulation on easy access and availability of pornography through internet and other social media so there is a job on government there is a job on government equally every every department should be concerned whether be it ministry of broadcasting it must have certain regulation right. be it electronics Correct. media it must have certain Correct. regulation very very important points very we will we will we'll, we'll take your yes. points we'll take your points further uh, mr borbara uh, mesivalu your organization nagaland legal services authority is part of the national legal services authority my question to you are basically providing legal yes. assisting legal services to the poor and the okay. needy uh, my question to you i mean do you have a specific uh, cell or do you look into these people victims of rape or crime against women so i just want to understand from you yes yes we do have in nagaland we have uh, we follow the nalsa scheme for uh, against sexual abuse and we have the victim compensation scheme also in place carry on yeah so then uh, accordingly we have uh, some panel lawyers who are impaneled in, under the nagaland state legal services authority and then we okay so this is a very interesting My thing voice they is, have uh, impaneled employing, lawyers then, yeah uh, that is how we function uh, we have the carry on carry on we can hear you yes we have impaneled lawyers under the nagaland state legal services authority and then we assign them and uh, any victim who suffers uh, rape or sexual abuse or sexual assault then we carry it to the home department where there is a relief cell and accordingly we uh, get the victim compensation and we provide it to the victims okay you have a you have a mechanism in place uh, we 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 yeah. will be happy to Just have those also, figures like, how effective yes, is yes, this mechanism uh, uh, hasina i mean we have been talking there was a very interesting suggestion by mr arub barbara there has to be a clamp down on the easy access to pornography there has to be education in the schools the society has to be involved uh, do, do you have any other specific recommendations to deal with this issue who changes who is responsible to change the mindset I think it's everybody in the society is responsible to change the mindset. It's just not one institution or one uh, organization. If you're going back to that, I think the school curriculum itself will need to make it a regular aspect of teaching children on bad touch and good touch with children are not able, children are not able to confidently report if anything happens. The teachers themselves has to be very trained to be more sensitive so that children comes forward when there's anything that is taking place. The community as a whole, the organization, will not just have to go on debating on social media and social platform, but rather be 
consistent in taking up the cases. That's very, very critical so, and very so, important. So we as an organization are having more than 30, 30 to 40 cases running in the if court where we are appearing every from day. The school level. Yeah, exactly. I do agree with Arubda's point that sex education should be implemented in schools because the internet is free now. So all immature children, they can access the porno sites because porno sites are not banned in India. So sex education should be implemented to, to uh, give them proper sex education so that they should not Rocky? be... That was a very important point. Yes, sex education, very important. Only this morning I was talking to a group of university students who said that it is appalling that in, in, at every high school and higher secondary school stages, when teachers were asked to make sex education compulsory and the teacher would come to the class, one of them pointed out and said, but today I will not teach you this lesson. You can go and read it at home because it was about reproduction. It was about the basic biological, yeah. you know, so the patriarchy that exists, the kind yeah. of situations that we face where, you know, and equal society cannot exist even within the classroom where the teacher is supposed to tell you that you know this the sexes are equal this is something that is natural from the beginning we have been it has been ingrained in us now the other point that I also want to make is apart from the fact that we are talking about pornography I think it is very important to draw a distinction between what is pornography and what is objectification of the of the of the woman's body and one I has think that is what Mr. Oru Barbara was saying you have to clamp down on advertisements that's what you said Mr. Oru Barbara Yes, I think. Yes. Objectification. Yes. Uh, Mr. Barbara, you, you have made this case. Did you talk about objectification? He talked about nudity, I think. He talked about nudity. nudity he talked and, about objectification. And, and, and that, is uh, a little, uh, that, that is a little tricky when yeah. you talk about nudity as, as, as a, a kind of incentive to, you yeah. know, rape. Yeah. or you know the motivation for rape then that becomes a little difficult Miguel? because exactly. we are I treading mean, on the, 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 we are the, Miguel, the, I mean objectification nudity clamp down on the internet absolutely because you know like like all the speakers kind of concur that uh, that uh, that yes you have to look at the context to see the crime uh, the context is the the gender gap is so huge, huge and in every little thing in our lives we're reinforcing it you know uh, in every little little uh, ceremony that we do in a, in schools in 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 the power structures like school in everywhere Absolutely. it's so patriarchy driven we have to undo this culture yeah. if we are to come and now, uh, actually talk about now, uh, reducing crimes against women right uh, i think mr arub barbara is back uh, mr arub barbara you talked about clamp down on the internet do you think the 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 information technology act uh, and we, that is also needs some kind of a revamp do you think relook no I, I, I didn't say clamping down i say regulate uh, mind the dif distinction and marginal distinction between the wo wo words i didn't say blackout i didn't say clamp down there <laughs> should be some that's a typical lawyer the speaking there government. mr robara no no not typical reason is rare okay not typical okay no no i want to know your views yes carry on please okay we 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 have lost the line toro barbara i'll have to come back to him because i posed the question and he has to respond to that uh, uh i mean mezi volu what about the in, in information technology act because that is what uh, uh, you know mr oru barbara well known lawyer was saying we have to clamp down on certain other things like like the internet to clamp down or regulate so that the uh, the, the people cannot have easy access to pornography Yes, we need a lot uh, to do as per the IT Act in Nagaland, uh, where hardly like we have any uh, any uh, system in place. So we hope that uh, the police reform takes place, so that uh, investigation also is strengthened. But police unless, reforms. even if any act is there, any ordinance is brought, a lot of uh, deterrent laws deterrent laws are brought. Unless the uh, the system is strengthened unless we have the machineries in place then it's not going to happen absolutely Miguel 
Uh, absolutely. See, uh, like I said before, that uh, the most dangerous part is that if we're, because I work in communities yeah. where you know now the, 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 the entire geophone revolution, where you have uh, free access internet and you can actually uh, and in the and inside a skewed gender context. So what happens? Obviously, with a child from a very young age, a male child especially, grows up with the idea when he sees his mother being uh, hit by his father, when he's in communities, you know, uh, the, the the men are you know uh, molesting women. So he grows up with this idea that yes, I mean, a woman is an object of desire, and that's why you see a small child, like six, seven-year-old child, will actually uh, hurl the choicest of sexist slurs without realizing what it even means. Right. So these needs to be undone, and, and the government has to have a complete clampdown on the access of these smartphones to children uh, till they wait at least no 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 uh, uh, hasina i'll come i'll come take this question to maini mohanto but before that hasina karbi uh, hasina i mean you know uh, do you want do you think that the media also needs to have some regulations on reportage of incidents involving rape do you think it is rather having a counterproductive effect, you know? We, the media must be thinking that we are reporting, exposing rapes, but do you think that is having an, uh, a, a different kind of an impact altogether? Yes, I think, uh, you know, Vasbir, the law says that we should not publicize confidentiality of the rape victim. Of rape but today, victim. Media, today, media, if you're looking at the social media, you have the 101 shares that you're re victimizing the victim over and over again, and there's no regulation to that. And the other aspect is victimization of the family of the victim. Yeah. These are ongoing. Const constantly, you, if you're looking now, I mean, with the access of media, because they don't have any kind of regulated rules, you're just finding everybody sharing pictures, sharing information. Sometimes some of these pictures are fake pictures, and they're just jeopardizing the entire conversation. They're making confidentiality an open space. When the law itself says we should have confidentiality, they regulate. I think that's very important that media also needs to understand that. Miley, media, yeah. you know, how, how should the media be actually, uh, you know, dealing with, uh, how should the media be dealing with uh, incidents involving rape? No, I have no objection with media's role because media should show the incidents, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, and the Urubda said about nudity in advertisement. Yeah. Uh, I don't support nudity, but uh, thing is not that uh, the heinous crime like rape cannot be justified related to nudity because a woman cannot be raped if the woman is completely nude on the road because this is very gender insensitive and also some people uh, now some people want to say that uh, after six o'clock uh, uh, at the evening time women should not come out because because uh, it's those, a are, those, are, those because are very rare voices yeah, yeah. Uh, Maini. Uh, yeah those uh, are rare I voices want to say that, yeah these are not common voices exactly if if a woman at the evening time seeing a woman on the road some men cannot control their criminal activities, then men should be kept inside, inside uh, right? Well, 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 but, but that, that is, that is, that is, that is, you will agree that that is, this is not a common theme. Nobody talks about women going out at six o'clock. Uh, some people, no, that no, is no, a, in every household. household. Uh, in every household. Yeah. No, I, 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 I don't think, I mean, I don't think people are talking about it publicly. Uh, so we, we don't know what people are talking at homes, uh, or whether they're restricting their girl, child to go out. Uh, Rakhi, I mean, my question, my question is, media do you think the media should regulate itself in uh, reporting incidents of rape do you think it should be treated as a normal news and you should keep on reporting every rape that uh, that has come to your notice sometimes you're picking up stories from the social media as well i think there has to be some sort of a, a, a measure that you take with the media being a little more sober because what Maini has pointed out is that all right you ca continue to report it because it has to be brought to its conclusion yeah. but the important thing that we miss out is there is a demonstration effect but the fact that you keep reporting these events and that there is so much of uh, visibility to such cases you know people around who are insensitive antisocials and people who are prone to such activities you know simply imitate there there is also an imitation and a demonstration yeah. effect that is happening all around imitation, our society. Imitation, demonstration effect, Miguel. Do you agree to that? Because it seems like I, it's happening. I think that is responsible. It seems for like a, it's happening for the rise. One of the causes. One of the causes. A very small cause, I would say, because the, the, the issue here is much deep rooted, and I think we should uh, go on these core social issues. Uh, to undo this rape culture uh, by just diverting uh, uh, or talking about death penalty or stringent deterrent does not actually work. So when you're talking about media's role, I would like to talk about media's role. Yeah. I, I think the uh, the 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 uh, what is the 
this media, the video media, I don't know what it's called. Yes. But that is still okay. But if you look of at now... Of course it's called the television media. The television media, sorry. So, uh, but the, the, the digital media, the new forums, the news yeah. forums which have come social up online, media. social media, news, the digital media forums, everyone, everyone who wants to jump into media with no experience comes up with these articles in these small, small pages which have opened. And I think there sometimes they take pictures, you know, of recently I saw a video. Oh, pictures even, they don't blur the faces of the oh. victims. They don't blur the faces full of the on. victims. Yeah, they put the on. names out. Yes. Recently I yes. saw a video of a, an old man actually attempting a rape on a six-year-old girl child who was nude. Yes. And I think these should be, these social Absolutely. media regulations should no, also no, be no, there. Now, Maisie Volo, I have got a different question for you, Maisie Volo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, what is happening is we are, we are seeing of late the rape incidents yes. uh, in, in Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal Pradesh is a conservative kind of a society. Uh, they're very, very traditional. They're very, very particular about their own tradition and custom. So is the case right. uh, in Nagaland. My question to you, why is incidents like rape happening? Even, even when the, the victims, Nagaland. they're right. not somebody who have come from outside and raping the people. These are the people from the same community. They are being stripped naked, they are being parroted through the towns uh, by beating by the local people. Even then, the very after one week, a similar thing right. is happening again. So how do you explain this? What, what do you think personally? Right. The thing is, uh, because of the uh, internet, because of the internet, the media, the social media and all those like it is the children are so exposed not only the children but adults are also yeah. more exposed to all these things so therefore it is uh, creating that kind of mindset in the people and then maybe they are trying to uh, right. imitate or at the same time those people who have anti-social mindset uh, to do evil uh, they are committing such offense against uh, those innocent victims True, that is one of the reasons. I will go for a break, but before that, uh, Maini Mohanto, how are you looking at the whole thing? Uh, even this kind of an incident is happening even in traditional societies. Yes, exactly. I already said that the only a strong law cannot prevent all these things. We have other things like the uh, government's role, role of the police and society's mindset. But we should come out from a patriarch mindset. We should be, gen police should be gender sensitive, our society should be gender sensitive, and we Absolutely. should- Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Police should be gender sensitive. We have to come out from the notions of patriarchy. The lot needs to be done on that note. We'll go for another short break. Stay on, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, Miguel, don't you buy the deterrent argument? We're talking about the POSCO amendment. Not at all, not at all. Because uh, I think uh, where, while we talk about deterrent, the country already has enough stringent laws to deal with crimes against children. The problem is with implementation and enforcement. So we need to, uh, so while we're talking about deterrence and one side which is already there, we need to actually focus on another big aspect of the act, and especially of the Juvenile Justice Act along with the POSCO Act, which is the preventive uh, side of it, the prevention side of it. What we do is, it's very easy to act, uh, to react. But what we often uh, don't do is act. And which, uh, when we start acting, is when we put focus on prevention. Programs in communities, in hill areas, in tea gardens, where the maximum amount of child rapes happen. So mm -hmm. I think we should move from this entire deterrent argument to going into an argument which focuses on preventive measures, which is, which is, Equally an important mm -hmm. segment of the POXO Act. So, Rakhi, I mean, uh, if, you, if you listen to Miguel, you find that uh, it was the biggest blunder which the government of India has done uh, by coming up with uh, this death penalty and amending POSCO. And uh, I also was wondering whether you're suggesting if social demog uh, demographics is the only cause or sole one of the major causes of such incidents of high acts of, you know, sexual crime, because I don't think that it has been proven and, you know, proven back and forth again that it could happen anywhere. Look at our natural. You know, we've said the hill areas are safe. We've said that small, yeah. small communities are safe. Sparsely populated areas are safe from such crimes. But no, this has been absolutely, you know, proven wrong now. So I think the one important thing that we are 
we, we, we need to understand. And I'm just going to uh, give you a small example from the US. The US, you know, we uphold is, is the supreme country which sort of, you know, upholds human dignity and human life. There's nothing greater than the right to life. And it's a constitutional, yeah. it, it's our constitutional right as well. But even in a country like that, where there was an incidence in the 60s to 70s, there was a high rise of drugs, uh, uh, sexual crime, and gun culture. You see, they tried to uh, initiate very stringent laws and even capital punishment in some of the states with the effect that in 10 years time there so, was a yeah, marked fall lack, in, in, marked in fall, but now but lack of I, stringent laws against guns in the United States we see what is happening what is no no what is happening it's gone back it's a cycle but it's a cycle look at, look at how they have juxtaposed that I along will, with preventive measures, ab along with good education, along with uh, outreach absolutely. activities. I agree. Like not what about, what about, what about, what about let me, let me, let me bring agree. in another aspect to this. Uh, Hasina, I'll come to you as well on the same question and Maini as well. Uh, Mezivolo, what about, what about customary laws? Uh, Naga customary laws, does it have a provision to deal with rapists? No, we don't have. Ah, what There's does no it mean? Under uh, 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 so, patriarchy. Uh, fact, is it patriarchy? It, in fact, yeah, uh, see, the patriarchal system is uh, still very strong here. And uh, that's why, like, the victims also, they feel hesitant to come out and, you know, uh, file a case against the accused. Or, for that matter, even the family also, they feel hesitant to come forward. But, however, like, when we talk about the customary practices, maybe like it is there, but however, customary law are not there. And it is the, in the regular course only where sessions court only where all these rape cases are being uh, filed. Right. Uh, Hasina, uh, Meghalaya is supposed to be quote unquote a matrilineal society. Uh, uh, and what about the doorbars and other things? Do they, how do they deal with the issues of crime against women, rape included? Hasina. Well, Avasbi, I'll go back to the research that, that was taken place five years ago called Access to Justice in seven states of the Northeast of India. We have seen that in many states that has got customary laws, especially in rural areas and villages, areas, many of the cases don't, many of the don't, cases go, don't, don't go reported in the police station. It's always dealt within the community themselves where they feel that they would just get the victim and the culprit family to come back to you know, an agreement. And these are things that has been practiced over the years. I'll also go back to the access to justice, which is an, on six schedule area. And that was another research that if you're talking about certain states, they have these unique practices that, especially in the state of Nagaland, the, the case study that we have done at that point of time, if a girl is raped below the road, that's considered rape as per customary law. If a girl is raped above the road, uh, I mean, that, that is not considered Market, rape. Market, that's you feel very that important. If a girl is, These are uh, things uh, that are still there very, very strongly in many, many states of the region. A very interesting point which Hasina is making. Naga customary law sees citing as part of her organization's research. If a girl is raped below the road, it's considered as rape. If the girl is raped above the road or at the road level, it is not considered rape. What is the logic behind this? Hasina, what is the logic? Well, I mean, according to the research that we have found, the logic behind it was being given primarily from all the... Pri yeah, the logic that was being provided under this was basically that if it's above the road, she can run away. But if she's below the road, she has no other support oh system. Oh, my God. And above the road, there are people that she can call upon it. That we was have the logic to, that was... I will ask, I have to go to Majivalu on this, but before that... Before that, Maini Mohanto, uh, even in traditional customary laws, mm -hmm. as Mezi Valu said, uh, there is no provision to deal with uh, rape, and uh, generally it's a patriarchal society. People find it hesitant even to come forward and complain. Yeah, it's very interesting. And I think the northeastern part of India, <coughs> our society, earlier our society was uh, uh, not so only Meghalaya, like all northeastern society. Nagaland uh, as yeah, well. Uh, Nagaland as well. All are. Uh, like uh, all were like matrilinear society. The status of women in our society was uh, were very supposed high, to be high earlier. Supposed to be high. Yeah. But uh, because we didn't have dowry, we didn't have the, the bitter uh, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relation, these, these, these things were not 
uh, present in our earlier society, but now scenario is changed uh, the, for the globalization. Uh, every uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we can. So, but uh, Miguel, absolutely, you are you are very right. Uh, I mean, this was this is something new that we have perhaps uh, following, or uh, I mean, how are you looking at this? Customary laws uh, doesn't even have this kind of provisions. No, I think so. They're not even dealing with this issue. Yeah, because uh, uh, interestingly what happens, most of these customary laws are hugely entrenched in patriarchy. <laughs> most of them actually. The, though uh, on the top of it you see uh, uh, as long as property is concerned, you know, they would kind of uh, try to project a very matri matriarchal, matrilineal kind of image. But now the dynamics are changing because and, and thereby you see in, in, in most, I would say, for example, I'm not talking about only Northeastern, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, ethnic customary laws, but religious customary laws, you know, which are absolutely regressive and are absolutely against women. For example, uh, for the child cup, marriage, cup panchayats. Cup panchayats, you know, mm -hmm. most are absolutely anti-women, and that's precisely why you see that this has been happening for years, and uh, and uh, and uh, the systems of customary laws are very feudal, uh, but and which does not, you know, accommodate. Uh, uh, modern forms of yeah. governance and democracy. Uh, add menstruation ceremonies to Absolutely. it, which is so regressive, which is well. so completely regressive. But Miguel, you have a point on the customary law uh, being embedded in a complete, uh, un unambiguous patriarchal system. Because uh, customary laws, as uh, now the yeah. women have told us repeatedly, are actually not laws, they are practices. practices. So practices. E every time yeah. there is a contestation. And most of them are not codified. They are not codified. codified. The yeah. whole problem is about codification, and which is actually uh, uh, the result of which we saw in last year's you know, election and the major violence that you know, flared up in the streets of Dimapur, yeah. leading True. to deaths. So I think the whole uh, question of whether it's only hill societies or you know, some of our, our, our older matrilineal societies have gone through these processes or, or we are catching them late this is you know uh, we, we're just trying to kind of truncate the whole argument I think we are all equally all moving towards a very no, very no, no, difficult and dangerous time when we are talking about societal problems now take the case of Assam this national crime records bureau figures of crime against children oh it's much more than even Haryana today Absolutely. there was a newspaper report this morning yes it was extremely shocking these are all figures of the government of India. These are not cooked up by anyone. Right. So this is extremely, extremely shocking. Maini Monto, what is going on? Uh, basically, as um, I will ask this question to Meiji Volu as well, I'll go to her. Uh, now, uh, you know, I mean, customary laws, everything is absolutely patriarchal. In take the case of some of the states, including Nagaland, where women are not encouraged to be part of the decision, decision making bodies. Yeah. They're not allowed to contest elections. Uh, this time, of course, five women candidates contested the elections. They rather created history. None of them won. That's a different issue. But yeah. what is going on? What do uh, you think? Yeah, was very, it's exceptional in Nagaland because uh, other northeastern countries, I still states. I want to stay uh, northeastern states. Uh, the, uh, the 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 scenario is different from the other part of India. You know, because uh, some we uh, in our, especially in our tribal society. You know the uh, the uh, we nowadays we spoke we speak about the uh, off soldier thing women's dress but in our tribal society the the tribal women they work in the paddy field with off soldier dress no one no rap uh, takes this, place this, this mm -hmm. place in the, no one no one no raises one, a question yeah, yeah. No this one is our society any, is part different. Of but and another thing is that your data about Haryana Haryana and Assam. Because in Assam, registra registration of case is higher than Haryana. In Haryana, some people, it's they don't even come out to register the mm -hmm. case. Absolutely. That mm -hmm. is also another yeah. factor. Uh, but, but that does not my, my, my data. That is the data national of the National Crime, crime Records yeah, Bureau. Uh, Miguel, I mean, oh, let me ask this question to, let me ask this question to uh, Maisie Volo. Uh, I mean, we, we are saying that, you know, every part of the different strata, uh, the entire society has to come up to deal with this issue. The entire, it's a societal problem. Uh, you know, it's not the responsibility uh, responsibility of the government alone uh, to sensitize the people. Now, in a state where 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 the uh, where the customary laws uh, do not have any provision uh, to deal with crime against women, where the women are not encouraged uh, to contest elections or to contest for tribal bodies. Uh, I mean, do you think uh, there needs to be a, some kind of a movement? Uh, is there an undercurrent? People are the people now realizing the importance of speaking out? Yes, definitely that is there. A lot of uh, awareness is going on, sensitization is going on. Even at the Nagaland State Legal Services Authority level also, we are trying to create uh, 
sensitization amongst the various groups of people yeah. in the society, at the governmental level, among the civil societies. So that is how we are trying our best uh, at the authority level also. Uh, Wazir, I w want to point out also when we were talking about the customary laws and practices, like, uh, like when uh, some, uh, a person commits a heinous crime, then what happens in Nagaland is that that person is banished from the village uh, okay. for seven years or for three years and that person is ostracized along with the whole family. So uh, I would like to mention about that earlier when the question came up, I could not mention that one. So that is something which is still happening also. But however, when an accused commits an offense, Still, Lord, uh, still, that person may go to another village or another town or city and commit the same offense. So that law or that practice is not applicable now. So that is what I want to point yeah, out. But I think that, that, is, that, that is some kind of a deterrent there, isn't it? If you are ostracized by your own village, you cannot return to your home. I think that is also a deterrent. But, but as she said, that same person can go to another place and commit the same crime. Absolutely, and there can be vigilantism. I think there's a lot of incidents of high vigil vigilantism. The moment you repress and you suppress people and you send them out, because society is so brutal, there are other such forces, you know, cropping up everywhere. And there's, in, you know, it's been reported everywhere that you, 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 you suppress the witness. You don't allow the witness to talk. There is hostility against witnesses. So when we talk about prosecution, we could go back to the whole process of why we, we are not having deliverance from this issue no. of rape right i think uh, it's all you know interlinked, all interlinked. yeah hasina what are what are some of the uh, customary practices how is the society in meghalaya particularly in the rural areas how do they deal with issues relating to crime apart from of course the normal judicial process hasina uh in in the past uh was beer yeah i think in the past the darbar shnang uh, are the the main force that even before a police would need you know, would need to enter a locality they need the permission of the Dongbash Nong, that is the local headman, and that is still very strong in many remote villages in Meghalaya that police cannot just get into arrest of anybody in a particular village whatever crime that has taken place unless the Rongbash Nong give access to it. Here it does cause a hindrance to the enforcement to act upon any kind of crime that takes place. But of course over the years things are changing. There's a lot of awareness that has taken place that things are coming up more and more police stations are being opened in many villages. But still when you have some local headman who's still playing that very dominant role that does not allow police, that sometimes the community as a whole take their own way of giving justice to the person rather than allowing the law to, you know, to intervene on it. So these are things that's happening still. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, Miguel, you have had a lot of good and bitter experience with the authorities, particularly the police. You have got good experience, you have got bad experience, or horrible experience, if I may use the word. Now, at the end of the day, police is one of the key, as Maini Mohanto said right at the beginning of this uh, discussion, police has a very, very major role to play. Now, first of all, who sensitizes the police? No, see, uh, there is a system, you know, they, they, there is a, a government, you know, which is, uh, there's a department that is actually when a law comes out, especially I'm talking about uh, laws made for children, police are to be specially trained and the law itself has options for that. Now, that has to be uh, actually enforced very strictly. Now, that, if that happens, if more sensitization programs happen, generally, generally if you see sensitization programs, they take a bunch of policemen at Thana level who are used to field work, they show them a bunch of you know uh, slide slide presentations, which at the end has no outcome. So the government uh, has to actually come up with more out of the box training sessions to actually have hands-on exercises, yeah. simulation exercises while training and sensitize, sensitizing the police, so that while dealing with cases of children, they become more sensitized and they also understand the law. Most of the police stations, if you go around, you ask them what is the POXO, what are the provisions of POXO. Oh, they, they, they would some not of them know. they don't know the provisions yes. of the POXO. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the day. Um, I'm running out of time, Maini Mohanto, uh, every, I'm not talking about the Assam government, every government, every elected government, people have reposed their trust, therefore the government has been elected, their, one of the primary responsibilities is to provide security to life and property. Hmm. So do you think the government's 
where the rape is taking place, they've actually f totally failed in their, their in their main duty of providing security to life and property of the citizens. Yeah, government is uh, the main role should be played by the government and police uh, about the police more em more uh, employment of women police should uh, because. 7% uh, women police are there in our Indian police force. So more women 7%. police should be there. Yeah, And police station, there should be more women police uh, to uh, handle these uh, cases like um, crime against women. Right. And uh, at last, I want to say that Justice Burma's commission should be implemented. Nirbhaya funds should be uh, utilized properly. Absolutely. Rakhi, your last words. I think police uh, uh, sensitization for all these uh, measures that have, have need to be taken in conjunction with police reforms, because only sensitization won't take place, won't, won't allow these measures to be implemented. Police, police reforms. reforms. Police reforms, reforms, one of the key. Uh, Hasina, last words. Uh, Araki is talking about police reforms, responsibility of the elected government to provide security to life and property. What are your last words? My last word would be that ongoing training at the Police Training Institute of every state has to implement training that is rigorous so that when police are being trained, they become more sensitive. That's a very important element that has to be taken forward. And also not to keep transferring enforcement who are being trained right. to deal with these cases. That sometimes those people who got the training from the enforcement, they're just there for six or seven months. The next time there's nobody else there. So again, you just have to go on in the process of ongoing training so Very that has true. to be looked into it the transferable part of people who are trained in the enforcement police reforms at the end of the day sensitization and police reform reforms Meji Valu what are your parting words Meji Valu yes uh, yeah justice is not limited to punishing the offender with death penalty but uh, we need to like uh, the other um, panel members are saying, I also agree that we need uh, not only police reforms, but reforms at every level in the criminal justice system. Then only we can uh, bring about changes. Okay. Uh, Miguel, have you decided to revise your stand against death penalty at the end of this discussion? Absolutely not. I still stand against death penalty. Okay. But uh, having said that, when you're talking about protection of children, I believe that the child protection system of the state should be strengthened, you know. District child protection offices should be well, well, well resourced. Child welfare committees should be trained and well resourced. Uh, the law enforcement agencies should be trained. And again, they face lack of resources. Uh, and uh, most importantly, the judiciary, the judicial officers, officials, because our cases under POXO yeah. are generally tried at the sessions courts. And the lower court uh, uh, judici uh, judicial officials should be trained to how Absolutely. to effectively come up. Uh, deal with cases under POXO and come up with effective judgments and timely convictions. Absolutely. Lot of training is necessary for the police, for the judicial officers and the society has to be extremely sensitive to this issue. It's not the responsibility of only the government. Stringent acts may act as a deterrent, but that is not enough. Effective implementation of the law, there's been already uh, existing laws to deal with crime against women. Those have to be enforced. The conviction rate has to go up. Police has to come up with foolproof cases. They have to be more sensitive to victims victims coming and lodging complaints perhaps the media also has needs to play gender an extremely extremely uh, extremely uh, important role and of course uh, gender, gender treatment, treatment gender sensitization begins home. right at, at, home. at home on this note we i end this edition of notice tonight i thank all my panelists for being active participants in today's discussion good night and goodbye